Well, hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods at Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for July 11, 2022. And today's title, A Perspective on Rejection. When I was in college, I wanted to be part of the choir. I'd been singing in the chorale, which was <laughs> kind of like the B team on campus for when it comes to singing. Um, the B team got to go to uh, local churches and sing, that was fine, that was okay, but I wanted to be part of the choir. The choir got a, got to go on tour around the country. A new choir director had taken over, so I thought this might be an opportunity to join. Sixty or so of us students had entered the chapel for tryouts, and within five minutes we were singing our first piece, our first verses for a song. Suddenly, with a, a focused look on his face, he stopped everything started looking around. Then he started up again, we sang, and, uh, and then he abruptly stopped us again. Then he looked at the bass section, which is where I was standing, where I was parked, and asked us to sing our part of the song. Well, he stopped us again. Then he looked at me and asked me to sing by myself in front of all these people, face flush with Embarrassment, I was stunned, so stunned I barely made a noise, barely had a whisper come out of my mouth. Before 15 minutes were up, I was asked to leave the room and was never welcomed into the choir. I was so embarrassed that I didn't want to even go back to the chorale and I didn't want to sing any more at all. I was totally rejected and I felt like a total loser. <laughs> rejection, let me tell you, rejection is hard to endure. And you probably know what I'm talking about. It was not my favorite memory, that choir um, practice, but it certainly sticks out because of, of how devastated and rejected I felt. As one who's been rejected in choir by former girlfriends and friends and others, the feeling uh, of being unwanted is not a pleasant one and it is hard to endure. Every time my spirit sinks, I felt um, angry, uh, unlovable, I felt angry, uh, I felt sad, uh, completely helpless. I even um, bought into the idea that something was wrong with me and, and I got frustrated because I, I couldn't undo it. It was no fun. However, reading last week's gospel lesson from Luke chapter 10, it hit me that rejection is going to be part of the Christian experience. It's going to be there. I'm not going, to, I'm just going to summarize uh, uh, Luke chapter 10, 1 through 20, when it speaks of Jesus sending out the 72. Uh, like John the Baptist, they were prepared, preparing the way, going ahead of him to every town and place uh, where Jesus was about to go. And Jesus instructs them on in how to, to go about it uh, in all these certain towns. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what they put before you, heal the sick, and so on. But when you go into a town, notice this, when, he doesn't say if, when you go into a town and are not welcome, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town I shake off against you, but know that the kingdom of heaven is near. Um, even the dust of your town we wipe off against you. So <clears throat> rejection is a part of things. Jesus tells his followers to expect it. It's... Um, you know, Jesus knows rejection better than most, wouldn't you think? I mean, he was rejected by his hometown of Nazareth, even by members of his family for a while. Um, they all thought he was kind of nuts in the beginning. Judas must have broke Jesus' heart. And, and so does, frankly, I, I would believe that it breaks Jesus' heart that millions of, of people refuse to acknowledge Jesus as their creator. In John chapter 15, 18 through 25, Jesus tells us not to be surprised by rejection. They hated me too, he says. Jesus says, and they hated me without reason. The reality is that Jesus reveals about being Christian is that the closer we get to Jesus, the more we should expect rejection from world, worldly uh, minded people. However, John also reminds, that, reminds us that we will never face it alone. We face it with Jesus and with the help of his Holy Spirit, another comforter. Yet there is an interesting thing that develops from worldly rejection. 
there's a kind of fortitude of the soul that can and does develop. In Acts chapter 5, the disciples were preaching at the temple and were arrested and thrown in jail. And uh, in verse 41, they, they were rejoicing they, because they were counted worthy enough to suffer for the gospel. These are the same guys that were afraid weeks before. But when they were released, they go hide. No, they went back to the temple and went back to preaching the gospel. And, a, and all after all, they were, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, they were witnesses to the resurrection. What could these scary religious leaders do to them that, that the resurrection can't overcome? The disciples were rejected by the religious leaders, the politicians, the rich and the powerful people of the time. Not so different today, really. Those men were arrogant jerks who worshipped their privileged position in life more than any savior that would have come along. And when the gospel came along, they refused to listen. The disciples would say, uh, preach the gospel anyway, even to us. Go ahead, preach it. If you are a, a living if you are living a godly life, chances are at some level with family members or others, you will be rejected uh, even by family members. Brothers, sisters, Jesus says, I come to bring division, right? Not everybody is going to agree with it. Expect that. Notice that Jesus didn't run from rejection, not even from his family when they rejected him and his ministry. He also teaches us that we should not run from rejection either. That would be dangerous, actually, because that means we would uh, compromise our faith somehow. Isaiah 53, 3-4 through 4, reminds us that rejection is, what, uh, is part of what led Jesus to the cross. He was rejected, and, and um, we considered him not. We esteemed him not. And that is, that's where I would encourage you to go in your rejection. Go to Jesus. He's with you. It has been my experience that rejection is usually usually, actually pretty constructive long term. It has usually pushed me to a place where I needed to go. Rejection can be horrible. It can be heartbreaking and lonely. And yet it forced me in the past to go to places I would have never gone before if I had not been challenged in this way. Each time I gain more insight about myself I had some things I needed to repent of, and it led me to a thicker skin and a greater awareness of myself, a greater clarity in what relationships are supposed to be and what faith is supposed to be. In the choir experience, I was flatly rejected. Well, there's more to the story, though. The way in which I was dismissed still seems more harsher than it needed to be. However, the director, the choir director, followed up for, with me for the next two years, giving me voice lessons for free. Part of that experience was to help me overcome my shyness. So he required me, he would build me up and require me to, to perform in the musicals on campus. They, they turned out to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I didn't go to the, I didn't go on the tours, but I did gain a better voice in the long term. Um, that led, by the way, to an opportunity later to be in the Lutheran Hour Choir and sing with the seminary where we did go on tour around the country, which was pretty cool. My experiences mentioned here are minor, though, compared to other kinds of rejections that you may have experienced or others have experienced. I get that. It's never easy, but it can become something that strengthens us and makes us wiser. And that's what I propose we do with it. Jesus knows what rejection feels like, but he reminded his disciples that he was never alone. Jesus always knew he could rely on his heavenly father. They were, they were tight. They are tight. Likewise, Jesus never leaves us alone. In John 15, he uh, comforted his disciples by reminding them that they would receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be with them. They will, he will be sent by Jesus. Jesus would remind them in other places that his love will never waver for them. Your names are written in the Lamb's book of life, in fact. Jesus 10.20 tells us to rejoice in that. Acceptance by Jesus is our ultimate win. He loves you and me, and that will never change. 
We know by the cross how much you mean to him, and he promises you a place with him by virtue of his resurrection. Ironically, it means that we have to reject the world to do it. When we are strong enough to stand with Jesus over the world, we'll begin to discover the greater benefits of knowing Jesus. So rejection can actually lead us closer to Jesus and knowing those, those eternal things more fully. May God bless you in your time of rejection. May the Lord give you peace in that time. May the Lord give you wisdom to learn, learn from it and grow from it. And may the Lord give you strength to, uh, uh, to have an unwavering faith when faced with rejection. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being with me today. I hope this blesses you, and I, I pray that you have a good week. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.